guys. Uh, so this is going to be your video for the second part of 7.5. So if you remember yesterday, we talked about inequalities. Uh, and today we're going to do a little bit more with that. But first, what I want you to do is get out your warm-up sheet of paper um, and make sure that you get this warm-up down. So I'll pause for a minute here so you have a, uh, <laughs> have a second to pause the video yourself and get this done. Um, since it is a Friday, to make sure that you then get this turned in at some point today. Wait for a time that's appropriate with the subteacher. So I'll pause now for you to get this done. Okay, hopefully you're done with your warm-up and you've turned in. I'm not going to give you answers because then obviously everybody would just come copy the answers uh, after watching the video. Um, so as long as you showed that you tried on both of these, it's okay even if you have the answer wrong. So you should get some notes from the substitute teacher to help fill in here for this. Or actually, you know what, you should have them already because it would just be the second part of the notes that we did yesterday. So I take that back. So find your notes from yesterday. So if you need to pause the video again for a minute so that you can find your notes, that would be good. Uh, if you need a reminder of what it looked like, the beginning was this. So writing and graphing inequalities, it should have had this table on here and symbols that we wrote inequalities for, we wrote some inequalities for sentences, we talked about solutions of inequalities, okay, so that's what we did yesterday. Uh, so today, we are going to graph inequalities. So remember we talked about with inequalities, when you have a variable and an inequality, that actually represents a lot of numbers, not just a single number like with an equation. So we graph them, and by graphing we mean like on a number line, it's not like a bar graph or a pie graph or something like that, but on a number line, we're going to do some things to show where the other solutions would be for an inequality. So first thing you need to know um, is what kind of dot we use or circle we use for these inequality signs. So on the number line, the number that's a part of your solution is going to get a dot, either one that's filled in or one that's not like this. This one's called an open circle or an open dot. So it's literally a circle, but you don't actually call it. We use that for these two inequalities. Remember, this one is the less than. The one on the right here is the greater than sign. So for those two inequality signs, we use an open dot. Okay? So make sure you fill that in. We use what's called a closed circle or a closed dot for these two inequality signs. Basically, these ones, but with the line underneath. Remember, this means they're either less than or equal to, that's what that line underneath means, it means it could also be that number you see in the solution, or greater than or equal to. Okay, so make sure that you have that written down as well. So that's the first thing you're going to start with, actually drawing onto your number line if it's given to you. If you don't get a number line drawn for you, you would obviously have to the number line yourself. When you draw a number line yourself, make sure numbers are getting bigger as you go to the right, smaller as you go to the left. Make sure you count by the same amount each time. So you can see on my number line, I'm going up or down by one each time. So if you want to count by twos, that's fine, but you have to consistently count by twos or by tens or whatever your number line is. So either create a number line if it's not given to you or use the one given to you. If you have to create one yourself, take a look at the inequality they want you to graph. And just put that number that you see in the inequality in the middle. You don't always have to have zero in the middle because that might make for like a really big graph if it's, you know, like y is less than or equal to 82. You don't want zero in the middle and then having to figure out a way to get up to 82. Okay, so just put that number that you have in the middle. If zero is nowhere on your number line, that's okay. Uh, so we are going to graph this inequality. You would say this in words as y is less than or equal to negative 3. So the point of the graph is for us to show that Negative 3 is the only number we see when we look at this, but that's not the only solution. It is a solution because we can see that line underneath. So I know that that means it could be equal to negative 3, but it also includes all the numbers that are also less than negative 3. So we want to be able to show that on the number line. So we've got our number line made for us here. We would use a closed circle. I'm just going to color that in to mark C, kind of small, because it uses this symbol, the less than or equal to. The closed circle tells us that that number is a solution. If you have an open circle, that means, hey, this number isn't a solution, but everything else shaded in is. And we'll talk about the shading in a second here. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to shade. You're going to color in, basically, either everything going this way 
for everything going this way. You're going to show where are the numbers that if I put them in for y, would make that inequality here. Okay? What are the solutions? So your shading shows where the solutions are. So think about yesterday when I asked you guys to give me examples of numbers that you could put in for the variable that would make the inequality true. That's what you're doing, is you're showing all those other numbers that could be solutions of the inequality. So think to yourself, what are some numbers that if I put them in for y would be less than or equal to negative 3? Hopefully you're thinking like negative 4, negative 20, negative 72, okay? Uh, Zero would not work, right? Zero is greater than negative three. So where are all those numbers in relation to negative three on my number line? Well, all those numbers are to the left of negative three. All of these numbers are solutions of that inequality. If I put in negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, any of those in for y, that would make that inequality true. So this is what we mean by shading, is where I just like scribbled in from the dot to the left. If you look, it says you're going to put an arrow at the end of your shading as well to show that it's not just these numbers. It's anything in this direction. So negative 8, negative 9, negative 10, negative anything going to the left here would also be a solution of that inequality. That is your graph. So when you're asked on your homework tonight to graph an inequality, this is what we're looking for. You need a number line. You need all those tick marks. Number has to be consistent. You need an open or closed dot and you need shading with an arrow. Okay, sometimes you will shade to the left, sometimes you will shade to the right. That depends on the inequality sign. Okay. So that's what our graph looks like for an inequality. Let's look at some more examples. Number one, b is greater than 8 is how we would read that inequality. Now here I gave you a number line but with nothing filled in. So first thing you'd want to do would be look at that number. Do okay 8. So I'm going to put 8 in the middle or close to the middle of my number line here. And then I would just count by ones here. So I'd have 9 and 10, 7 and 6. I want at least this much on your homework. You need to have the number in the middle and at least 2 to the right and 2 to the left so that I can make sure that you are doing your number line correctly. Okay? Now that you've got your number line filled in, next thing you should decide is what kind of dot goes here on 8? Open or closed? Well, look at the symbol. That's a greater than symbol, but it doesn't have a line underneath. So that means 8 is not a potential solution of that inequality. So the 8 should have an open circle to show that 8's not a solution, okay? This one and the one that's just less than are open circles. Now, last thing you need to decide is where do I shade? In other words, where are the solutions of this inequality? Where are the numbers that if I were to put them in for b would make this inequality true? And that's why it's helpful to read it in words. b is greater than 8. So where are the numbers that are greater than 8? Those are your b, so those are the solutions. Well, the numbers that are greater than 8 are over here. And a good way to check and make sure you got it right if you're not sure if you shaded the right way is pick a number that's underneath your shading. So let's say 10 and put it in for B in your inequality and see if it works. So if I put that in, is 10 greater than 8? Sure is. So I did that right. If I accidentally shaded over here, then hopefully when I tested it, I would figure out, oh, that, that doesn't work. That doesn't make my inequality true. All right, let's look at number two. G is less than or equal to 1.4 is how you would read that, or 1 4 tenths. So I'm going to put 1 and 4 tenths in the middle of my number line. Now, how do you think we number it when we've got a decimal? We've got some options. I think the easiest option would be to just count by tenths. So like 1.5, 1 1.6, 1 1.3, 1 1.2. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Because those numbers take up a lot of space because there's like two numbers and a decimal, I'm going to skip a tick mark and then write 1.5. That's okay to do as long as I keep doing it. Skip a tick mark and then write my 1.6. And same thing going this way. Skip one and then write 1.3. Skip one and then write 1.2. So I still get in my number and the two on each side, which is my requirement that I want from you guys. Next thing you need to do is figure out which dot to use. So it's a less than or equal to, which means 1.4 is a solution. So that should be a closed dot, one that you color in. Make sure on your homework I can clearly tell what it is. If I can't tell, I'm just going to go with what I think it is, and that might not be what you intended. So make a nice big dot that I can clearly tell either is not colored in or is. 
Uh, and then we need to figure out which way to shade. G is less than or equal to 1.4. So where are the numbers that are less than or equal to 1.4? They would be to the left of our dot here. So our graph should look like that. All right, number three, R is less than one half. So one half in the middle. How am I going to know? Again, you have options. You can go off by halves. For some people, that might be a little difficult to do, okay? Um, so a half, more than a half would be one, right? And then one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half. Going down, a half less than a half would be zero. And then negative a half, negative one, negative one and a half, negative two. If fractions are a struggle for you, or if it's a harder fraction than one half, let's say you get like R is less than two ninths. Well, counting up by two ninths might not be all that easy for you, right? But here's an easy way to do it. For each tick mark, and I'm going to, again, skip one going in either direction here. Fill in a fraction. The bottom number is always going to be the same denominator that you had. So in this case, 2. If it, if it was this, it would be 9 on the bottom. And then just treat the top like a normal number line. Well, to the right of 1 would be 2 and 3. To the left of 1 would be 0 and negative 1. And then you've got all your appropriate fractions filled in. It's okay, at least for me, for right now in my class, to not go ahead and use that to 1 or um, not go ahead and use that to 0. I can just leave it like this. So that's an easy way to fill in fractions and use fractions on your line. So now we need our dot. R is less than a half, so an open dot. One half is not a solution. And R is less than a half. So where are the numbers less than a half? Yeah. And last one. B is greater than or equal to 0. So 0 in the middle. That's going to give us positive numbers to the right and negative numbers to the left. We want a closed dot on zero because zero is a potential solution. And in words, this is V is greater than or equal to zero. So that means I want to shade in those numbers bigger than zero. So shade into the right. Now that we've graphed four examples here, I want to show you a little trick. If you look at those inequalities, inequalities, I mean like up here, B is greater than 8, G is less than or equal to 1.4. If you look at the inequality symbol, the little gator mouth, shark mouth, whatever you want to call it, if you think of that like the tip of an arrow, then it is pointing in the direction you should, should shade. So like this greater than sign, if I were to draw it so like it's an arrow, it's pointing to the right and we shade it to the right for our solution. This one, if I think of it like an arrow, is pointing to the left and we shade to the left. This one is pointing to the left, this one is pointing to the right, okay? So that's a trick you can use for graphing. However, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. That only works when they write the inequality so that it always starts with the variable, so that the variable is on the left. If the variable is on the right side of the inequality symbol, that trick doesn't work. It's basically backwards, okay? So you can only use that trick if it starts variable, inequality sign, and then that's what I get from here and Joey. All right. Uh, other thing you're going to have to do on your homework is you're going to be given a graph and you need to write the inequality for it. So that means you're going to pick a variable. I don't care what one, any letter you want, okay? I would highly, 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 highly suggest that when you write your inequality that you write the variable first. Because like we just said here, that makes it easier with that graphing trick, right? In all of these ones, the variable this is basically who you're going to write, is you're going to write something like this. G is less than or equal to 1.4. So you're going to pick a variable, you're going to figure out what sign to use, the number you'll know which one to use because it'll be the one that has the dot on it in the graph. So, let's say I want to use E here. E is going to be my variable. What number am I comparing E with? I'm comparing it with the one that's underneath the dot, so negative 25. I left some space here to fill in one of my four inequality symbols. It's going to be one of those four, right? Less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. How do I know which one? Well, first of all, look at the dot. The dot in this case is open. The only ones that use the open dot are these two. So those two are out for this example. So now, is it the less than sign or is it the greater than sign? Well, your variable, remember, represents what's shaded in. So this whole shaded in area is your E, okay? These are all your potential solutions. So how do these numbers that are, have the shading above them compare to negative 25? Are they less than negative 25 or are they greater than negative 25? Negative 
24, negative 23, negative 22, those are all bigger than, greater than negative 25. So our inequality would be E is greater than negative 25. You can check it by then looking and going, okay, that inequality sign's pointing to the right, this is pointing to the right, so that works, I did that correctly. So take a look over here. We'll pick another variable, let's use G. The number I'm comparing to is 12. Which inequality thing do I want? Look at the dot, look at the shade. Here is your G and your potential solution. I know it has to be one of the ones with the line underneath because that's the ones that we can fill with dots. These numbers, how do they compare to 12? Those numbers all seem like bigger than 12. So this should be the greater than or equal to. So G is greater than or equal to 12. That's your answer for this one. So G is greater than negative 25 is your answer. See if you guys pause the video and see if you can do the bottom two on your own. Okay, these bottom two, again, you can pick any variable you want. I'll do x. That's going to compare to negative 1. These numbers are less than negative 1, and it's a closed dot. So less than or equal to negative 1 is our inequality there. Here I'll use y. We're comparing to 45 and a half. And these numbers here are less than 45 and a half, and it's an open dot, so just less than 45 and a half. You can make your mark there. So now I ask you guys this. If x is less than 30, same as 30 is less than x. Well, come up with some values of x that would work for this one. If x is less than 30. What about this one? 30 is less than x. Think to your head, in your head, some values of x that would work in that inequality. Here you're thinking different numbers, let's say. So if I were to say 29 and put that in there, is this now opening towards the bigger number? No, it's not. Remember, that's what it's supposed to do. So these numbers actually have to be bigger than 30. So solutions that would work here would be like 31, 32, 33, a thousand, something like that, okay? So no, they're not the same because they don't have the same solutions. In fact, they basically have opposite solutions, right? None of the solutions here are going to work here and vice versa. So they're not the same even though they've got the same number and variable. But what did change is where those things were, right? The x went from the left to the right, the 30 went from the right to the left. Well, in this example, the 30 is being opened up by the inequality sign here, the inequality sign is opening up to the x. It's opening up to a different value in each one, which means there's a different one that's the greater value, okay? So in other words, when we have inequalities, you can't just flip what's written on either side and keep the inequality sign the same, because that won't actually be the same answer. If you want to flip it around, you've got to also flip the inequality sign around. So that's what it says right underneath here. You're going to want to go ahead and write that down. When you change what's written on each side of the inequality, must also flip the inequality sign around, make it face the other way. You're not going to pause the video for a second so you can get that written down. So I'm just going to give you some examples of like rewriting these so that it's also the same inequality still. So y is greater than or equal to 45. I can change it. I can write the 45 first and then the y, but I've got to flip that inequality sign around. I've now got to make it open up this way. It's still opening up to the same quantity, right? Here it was opening up to the y, so here it's still got to open up to the y. Okay, so the equivalent inequality would be 45 is less than or equal to 1. So maybe I'll write them under here this time so you can see how similar they are. We're just flipping things around. So 27 is less than n. That would be the same as putting n here and 27 here, but that inequality sign has to flip around. Now it has to be m is greater than 27. Again, we're going to flip flop what sides these two are on. Opening up towards the m, opening up towards the m. So it really is the same inequality. But by switching what's on either side, we also have to flip that inequality sign around. Pause the video and see if you guys can write these two on your own. So for this one, hopefully you did k is greater than or equal to 100. And here, 23 is less than w. Those would be your equivalent inequalities. Why do we need to know that? Well, because sometimes when they give you an inequality graph, 
like I talked about earlier, the moment of the variable first. That trick works when the variable is first, right? So what happens on these inequalities is a lot of times students go, okay, 22, no line underneath, so open dot, and they fill in their numbers, and then they go, okay, um, Mrs. Gillespie told me I just think of this like the point of the arrow, it's pointing to the right, so I'm going to shade to the right. Well, that doesn't actually work if we check. If I plug in like 23 into my inequality here, is 22 greater than 23? It, oops, no it's not. What did I do wrong? Well, I didn't pay attention to the fact that it had the number first and then the variable. It's easier in our heads to graph with the variable first because we read left to right. And we're basically finding where the solution is, the variable, first. So it's easier to do it that way. So here's what you're going to want to do when you see that that happens, when you see that the variable is first. You're just going to want to rewrite it, okay? And that's what I wrote right up here. When you're graphing it, the variable's on the right, you're going to want to rewrite it and flip the inequality around. So when you see this, that should be a red flag. Fix your inequality, okay? So that means I'm going to do y. 22, but I've also got to flip that inequality sign around so that it's still opening up towards the 22. Now, hopefully, I'll graph it correctly. 22, 23, 24, 21, 20. I would have an open dot on 22, and now I can see that that's y is less than 22. It's pointing this way. Well, I'm going to shade this way because oh, those are the numbers that are less than 22. And if I test it, if I put 21 in here, yeah, that works. 21 is less than 22. Okay? So you want to make sure when you see inequalities, like this, where the variable comes second, and when it's on the right, you want to rewrite it. So make it j is greater than or equal to 4. This one we're not going to rewrite because the variable's on the left. That's how we like it. So this one would stay. Don't rewrite anything. This one we would rewrite. h is greater than 41, and then graph it. I'm going to quick give you the solutions here so you can pause for a minute, and then I'll give you the solutions. So here, when you rewrite it, j is greater than or equal to 4, should be shaded this way. b is greater than or equal to 37, you do not want to rewrite. It already has the variable first, and that's the way we like it. So we're going to keep that the way it is. Have it close that on 37, and then shade it to the right. And then this one you do want to rewrite, because it's got number first instead of variable first. So then when you make it h is greater than 41, that means you're going to want an open dot. 41, shaded to the right. So make sure you've got the right inequality graphs for that. All right, that is your notes. Uh, you have a worksheet for homework tonight. Um, there's a lot of different problems on there. Some where you're writing the inequalities, some where you're graphing, some where you're matching. So they've given you inequalities on a graph and you need to match them up. Uh, you can just write the letters that you think match for that. And that's it.